did that stress you out? Because there are a certain group of people who whenever I cut strings off a guitar, it really stresses them. They, they really don't like it. And it kind of perplexes me because it seems to revolve around this idea that the guitar neck is a very fragile thing that must be babied and, and cuddled and tucked into bed at night and... Well, it's just not, is it? So instead of a restring Sunday today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about restringing myths and myths about guitar strings in general. Because this is my main guitar, this is an Ormsby SX GTR, and I've talked a lot about this on the channel. You've seen it a lot, so uh, restring Sundays, normally I just talk about the guitars. For this one, uh, I think I've talked about this a lot already. So while I still have to restring it, it's too cold to do it outside where I normally do the restrings. So I thought it might be interesting just to kind of have a look at some of those ideas about restringing guitars and how it's, it's dangerous to uh, cut the strings off. The argument for a lot of people seems to be that there's a lot of tension on a guitar neck, and that is true, but they're built to take that tension. They're designed to have it. It's hard wood with steel going through the middle of it. When you take that tension off, even rapidly by cutting the strings off, it doesn't really have a huge effect. The neck will move a little bit, but nowhere near to what you might think it would. Especially on these guitars, this is a 27.5 inch multi-scale, so there's more tension on this neck than a standard neck. And that clip at the beginning of the video, I snipped these strings off two days ago, and I left this guitar specifically to show you in this video what two days without any of that tension on the neck does. Almost nothing. The way I set up my guitars is when they're under tension from the strings and the truss rod is counteracting that tension, there's just the tiniest, subtlest little bit of relief in the neck, just a little, little bow. And once I took the strings off of this guitar, the neck went right back to dead straight. And when I put the strings back on, there'll be no need to readjust the neck at all. It'll go right back to what it originally was. It's very hard to show on camera here, but the neck is as straight as it could possibly be. It's a very, very slight deviation from what it originally was set up as, and it'll go right back to normal once I put the strings back on. Almost nothing has changed. The neck is still very, very straight. Guitar necks can take it. They're stronger than you or I. They're hardwood with steel running through them. And the reason that I take guitar strings off all at once is because I'm cleaning the fretboards. I want a clean guitar. So easiest way is to take the strings off. Now, the argument or counter argument to taking all the strings off would be if you've got a floating tremolo. If it's moving because it's balancing with string tension and spring tension, uh, it'll be slightly more difficult to balance it back out if you take the strings off and then put the strings back on. But again, I want to clean the guitars and the easiest way to do that is by taking all the strings off. And most of my guitars are hardtail anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I've also seen another argument. Some people say it's perfectly fine to take the guitar strings off the guitar completely, but it's the cutting of them at tension, that's the problem, because it's a sudden and dramatic loss in high tension to no tension on the neck, and that's not good. To which I would say, are you sure? This guitar has a Floyd Rose locking tremolo. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And one of the big features of a Floyd Rose is that you can dive bomb. You can relieve all the pressure off the strings all at once, rapidly. Watch. This guitar went from having lots of tension on the neck to having no tension on the neck to having lots of tension again in milliseconds. It's a rapid change, but it doesn't affect it. Cutting off all the strings at once is actually less of a rapid change than just dive bombing on a Floyd. And there's another theory that I'd like to briefly talk about when it comes to guitars and string tension, and that's flying with guitars. You'll see this advice often. It's detune your guitar before you get on a flight because of the pressures and the air and temperature changes. And this isn't advice coming from some random guy on a forum. For example, I'm gonna read this off Fender's very own website. Asked and answered, what's the best way to fly with your guitar? Detune your guitar. Loosening the strings on your guitar will help deal with the changing and unpredictable temperatures and pressures that come with any flight. In addition, a humidifier can help manage the rising and falling levels of moisture inside your case. Those fluctuating variables put enough strain on the neck to snap even the strongest of woods. Now that seems scary. Imagine getting on a flight with your guitar and then getting off and your neck has just snapped. But does that really happen? Sure, guitars get damaged on flights all the time, but that's mainly because baggage handlers are just throwing things. And like we said before, guitar necks are 
very strong, hardwood with steel rods going through them. They're stronger than your bones. And I've never been on a flight where my bones have snapped due to pressure changes. And maybe they're talking about pressure changes being different in the cargo hold rather than the cabin. But then in this very same article, they're talking about how, as of March 2015, the Department of Transportation's law that carriers must allow passengers to stow their small musical instruments, guitars, violins, etc., in appropriate stowage in the cabin took effect. So now I've been on flights before and I've flown with guitars with tension on the neck and with no tension on the neck. There was no difference. At least, I didn't find one, and my bones didn't break either. Of course, there's pressure changes in the cabin. You know, your your ears might pop on takeoff and, and landing. But is that enough to snap a guitar neck? Just about every guitar that I've ordered from different places across the world, even going far as the other side of the world, they've arrived pretty much in tune. And that's air freight. What I'm trying to say here is guitar necks are very strong and you can cut your guitar strings off. Oh, another thing that I see an awful lot when I just snap strings down the middle is, uh, why do I do that? Because it's really quick, I don't have to unthread anything. I can just pop the tiny bits out of the back and just take the strings off. Very quick, very efficient. But why do I do that? Why do I not take them off gently and, and wrap them up and save them? Couple of reasons. One, these strings are not worth saving they're destroyed. Like a close-up of my high strings, they turn black, they rust completely, I get rust on the wound strings too, my sweat is acidic, it, uh, it, it just it cuts through strings, coated strings. It does take slightly longer with coated strings for that to happen, so I like coated strings for that reason. Those are just standard guitar strings that you're looking at, and uh, they only last a while before they start to get eaten away. They're not worth saving, they can't be saved, plus even if they were, there's a lot of extra difficulty. You'd have to keep track of which guitar you're using because this guitar has a reverse headstock, so the low E is going to be much longer than the high E, and if I put it on any other guitar, it wouldn't fit. Plus, you've got the added fact that I probably wouldn't be able to put it back on these guitars because these ones have locking tuners, so there's no multiple winds. That's kind of the point of locking tuners, so there isn't a huge amount of extra string there. Basically, it's not worth the trouble, and the guitar strings are just gone anyway. There's, there's no point in saving them. So yeah, that was a bit of a different video, wasn't it? Uh, drop it in the comments below whether you cut strings off or if you just unwind them. Do you reuse guitar strings that have been used or do you just chuck them out and put some new ones on? Let me know. Be interested to see where the, uh, the spectrum is among the audience. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time if you subscribe and like the video. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.